right, getting into the 60s and 70s, and so we'll start with JFK. John Fitzgerald Kennedy, our 35th president. While I play with the zoom here to try to make it as good as I can. And there we go. JFK, our 35th president, will only serve a little over two years. And we'll get into that. Obviously, spoiler alert, we all know that JFK ended up getting assassinated. So that will be the big reason why he doesn't serve a whole term. But I digress. So his background. He was born wealthy, the Kennedys, super wealthy, super powerful in the state of Massachusetts, still to this very day. One of his, uh, maybe nephews or cousins or something, uh, is a congressman there right now and tried to unseat uh, a sitting senator there, primary, someone in his own party that didn't end up working out, but still a very powerful um, family. Uh, JFK himself obviously became president. Uh, his brother was a senator and an attorney general and ran for president before getting assassinated. Uh, his uncle was a longtime senator from Massachusetts, Ted Kennedy. Um, and then, like I said, his, his nephew or cousin, I can't think exactly the relation there. So lots of power in the state of Massachusetts. He will go to Harvard. Then he'll serve in the Navy during World War II. He was the captain of a PT boat. He will survive a collision. And uh, he will kind of turn into a hero at this moment. So uh, his boat gets hit by a much bigger boat, and he couldn't do anything really about it. I think it was a, it was a Japanese boat that hit them, uh, and he couldn't do anything, right? He couldn't turn on his lights or whatever, because then they get shot out and would die. So um, what he did was he, he dragged his hurt crewman, Miles. He literally tied a rope around this guy's chest and put the rope into his mouth and swam dragging the guy by his teeth. Um, so he'll end up winning the Purple Heart because he got injured during this, messed up his back pretty bad. Uh, and then he'll win the Navy and Marine Corps medals for heroism. heroism. So he was a legit war hero. He'll serve as a congressman in Massachusetts when he comes back. Super popular. Wrote, to, wrote a book called Profiles and Courage. That was a bestseller. Uh, and then he becomes senator uh, until 1960 when he runs for president. So with that, he will defeat Richard Nixon, future president Richard Nixon, in the 1960 presidential election. It was one of the closest elections in U.S. history up to that point. Only 100,000 popular vote difference, which is not very much. And there are always questions when it comes to the Kennedys about whether or not the mob was involved. There are some interesting theories about the mob and Frank Sinatra helping JFK uh, get elected through perhaps not the most legal of means, but that's never been really substantiated, so here we are. First televised debate, right? We have debates now on TV all the time. Um, I think they are mostly useless, but uh, this will be the first time that we have a debate uh, on TV. So, if you watched the TV debate, you thought JFK won. He looked cool and collected. He was younger and better looking, so that always helps. But if you listened to the radio, you thought Nixon had won because you thought his answer sounded better. But the actual appearance on TV was pretty, pretty stark. JFK, young and strong. Nixon, old and sweaty. Was wiping his face off constantly because he was sweating so much. In the end, like we said, JFK becomes elected. He'll be the second youngest president after, after Teddy Roosevelt. And he will be our country's first Catholic president, which doesn't sound... All that crazy now, but up until this point, there was a lot of anti-Catholic sentiment in America, going all the way back to the nativists. Um, but um, all sorts of crazy things during the campaign where they would say literally that JFK was going to have a phone to the Vatican and Rome and the Pope was going to make all these decisions for him and all sorts of crazy stuff like that. But anyways, here's pictures from the debate. As you can see, um, Nixon there wiping the sweat off of his lip uh, constantly the entire debate, which made him look... Nervous, right, or sick. So, true or false, those who watched uh, the debate on TV thought that JFK had won, while those who listened on the radio thought that Nixon had won. Is that true or is that false? All right, the Cold War, obviously. JFK becomes president during the Cold War period. So, obviously, a lot of his foreign policy is going to be focused on the Cold War. He will not be uh, a president for very long, but he will be super involved in Cold War stuff and anti-communist stuff, especially towards Cuba. So, during his presidency, the Soviets will begin building the Berlin Wall. Why did they build the Berlin Wall? That was to keep people from leaving communist East Berlin. So like we said forever ago, actually I'll flip to the next slide to show you this map. So Berlin itself, as you can see there, is split in half, right? If you get to the western half of Berlin, you can get in the airport there and you can fly out of uh, the communist Eastern world if you want to. 
And a lot of people did. So a lot of people ran across that border from east to west Berlin, got on a plane, and got the hell out of there. The Soviets didn't want any more of that, so they built a wall to keep people from leaving East Berlin. The Bay of Pigs fiasco would be one of JFK's first foreign policy decisions, and it was one of his worst foreign policy decisions. It ended up being a complete and total, utter disaster. So, what happened was a bunch of people left Cuba when Castro came to power. A lot of them ended up in Florida, right? Which is why, especially Miami's a very, a very Cuban area. But the CIA will take about 1,500 of these people that had left, these exiles, and they train them secretly in bases all over uh, the southeast, like Florida, but also in bases outside of the country. And then they will send them to lay at, uh, land at this place called the Bay of Pigs. Once they get to the Bay of Pigs, these 1,500 men are going to jump off their boats and they're going to start killing communist soldiers, and eventually they're going to lead a popular uprising that will overthrow Castro. Uh, obviously, this did not happen. It was a complete and utter immediate failure. 1,100 people get captured, 400 get killed immediately. Like, it was not anywhere near successful. This would be one of JFK's biggest foreign policy uh, embarrassments, and to his credit, to JFK's credit, he will, he will learn and he will grow from this. Uh, unfortunately for most of American history, our president's don't uh, like to admit mistakes or grow from mistakes. Very few of them were capable of doing so. Uh, that generally denotes who's a better president from who's a worse president. Uh, we won't know that really for JFK because he dies so quickly, uh, but this was a positive step where he sees they did something incredibly stupid, listens to the CIA a little less, and makes some better decisions going forward. Anyways, as far as programs and spending, he'll spend a ton of money on containing communism. Uh, he'll start things like the Peace Corps and the Alliance for Progress to help contain communism. Uh, or stop it from spreading it to uh, Latin America uh, and other developing countries. So he's going to be a big cold warrior. His brother, uh, Bobby, who was going to run for president uh, but get assassinated in 68, also very big into the Cold War. So on the left, you see them building the Berlin Wall. I showed you this map here before. Uh, and then on the right, you can see uh, you are leaving the American sector, and then it has it in uh, um, Russian, and then it has it that looks to me the third one to be French. Uh, remember here on this map here, so not only was Berlin split in half between east and west, but then that western part was split into three pieces controlled partly by America, by England, and by France, which is why you see so many different languages on that side. So, next question, why did the Soviet Union build a wall between west and east Berlin? Was it A, to stop the flood of Germans pouring out of east Berlin to, uh, that were going into west Berlin? Was it B, to stop the Berlin airlift? Was it C, to divide the people of Berlin who were pro and anti-communist, or is it D, all of the above? Which of those is the correct answer? All right, the Bay of Pigs. So there's an arrow right there pointing to where the Bay of Pigs is in Cuba. Um, Havana there in the top left is the capital, and that Havana is only about 90 miles from uh, Florida, so we're pretty close. Bottom right there is Guantanamo Bay is where we hold suspected communists. Or not communists, sorry. Suspected terrorists is what we hold there since 9-11. On the right you can see... A lot of our Bay of Pig commandos uh, very quickly arrested. So true or false, the Bay of Pigs was a success. I think those pictures kind of gave it away, but you can answer yourself. All right, so more Cold War stuff. Cuban Missile Crisis. This, this really proves that JFK learned from the Bay of Pigs fiasco. So the Soviets began putting missiles on Cuba. Nuclear-tipped missiles on Cuba. We discovered this because we had planes that did surveillance flights every hour over Cuba. We took a bunch of pictures, and we saw these missile silos or missile areas being built. So what do we do? Right? What do we do? Do we go to war with the Soviet Union for doing this? Do we go to war with Cuba? What we decide to do is order a quarantine of Cuba, which was a blockade. So we surround Cuba with military boats, and we say nothing's getting in or out. You need to remove the missiles. Once you remove the missiles, we'll let normal stuff happen again. We could not uh, technically call it a blockade because a blockade is an act of war, so we called it a quarantine to get around that. The U.S. says that any attack on the United States by Cuba would warrant a military response. So if they shot any missiles at us, it would become World War III, right? But JFK refuses to invade or bomb Cuba. The CIA very much wanted him to invade Cuba. Uh, the military-industrial complex very much wanted him to invade or bomb Cuba, but since he saw how bad the Bay of Pigs went, he decided, we're not doing that again. So, we just continue the blockade. For an entire week, the world watches as a Soviet ship steams towards Cuba. 
right? It's every tenth. It's getting a little closer, a little closer, a little closer, and it had missiles on it. The last second, it turns around and goes back. Okay. Uh, what ends up happening here is that the Soviets agreed to remove the missiles from Cuba if the United States removes its missiles from Turkey. So really what this was was a big Soviet play to try and get America in the same position they were in terms of missiles, right? So we put a ton of missiles in Turkey, nuclear tip missiles that could kill every single person in the Soviet Union, right? We had enough of them aimed at enough targets that we could kill everybody. And we went through war plans every year to game that out. What would it look like if we nuked the Soviet Union? What would it look like if we nuked China? The Soviets knew we had those missiles there, so they wanted to put missiles just as close to us as we had missiles close to them. So Cuba was about as close as they could get, so they put missiles there and they end up using it as a bargaining chip to get us to remove missiles from Turkey. This will be the closest that the world has ever come to nuclear war. And let me tell you how close we really came. It came down to one Soviet guy on a submarine from stopping us from going to nuclear war. So what ends up happening is that they are sending this big ship, the surface ship full of missiles and stuff to Cuba and everyone's watching at the same time. They had a nuclear submarine underneath the water following it. That nuclear submarine was told, if you lose communication with us, with Moscow, that just assume that war has started and start shooting missiles at the United States. They lost communication, right? There was a radio failure, right? They didn't lose it because of a war, which is what they had assumed they'd lose it for. They lost it because their radio sucked or whatever, right? So to shoot a nuclear missile on a nuclear, or a nuclear submarine, uh, you have to put two guys. Those are the Soviets did it. They had two guys with two keys. So the first guy puts his key in and activates it. The second guy puts his key in and activates it, and then the captain can shoot. The first guy put his in and said, yep, let's do this. The second guy said no. That's how close we came to nuclear war. One guy saying no. We should have statues to that guy. Anyways, Vietnam. Okay, Kennedy will not be the president when Vietnam actually becomes a war, but he will do tremendous, uh, tremendous foundational work getting us involved into that uh, useless war. So he will send thousands and thousands of quote-unquote advisors into Vietnam. Remember, I told you before uh, that advisors generally mean soldiers, right? Uh, but just not wearing soldier clothes and not carrying guns. But they can become soldiers very, very quickly, which they will. So this will drastically increase our involvement there. He'll set the stage for, for Johnson to do an awful job there and Nixon to do perhaps the worst job possible there. But we'll get to that in its own separate power. So the Cuban Missile Crisis, you can see both um, uh, Gorbachev, right? I think it's Gorbachev at this point, is it? Oh, it's Khrushchev. Khrushchev and uh, Kennedy arm wrestling over the bomb, right? Over who's going to use it. They both have, you can't see it for Khrushchev, but they both have uh, detonators to blow up the bomb on each other, this sort of thing. Arizona Republic, the U.S. blockades Cuba, tells Russia to lay off. So here are the sites that we saw, right? We can see this. Um, from the sky, right? Which is which we these pictures are what we use to determine that they actually did have missiles and launch sites there. On the right, you can see this map. If depending on where the missiles are, where they could be launched to, a lot of big cities are in trouble, right? All these cities were technically in range of some of their missiles, right? Especially Miami. Miami's 200 miles away. They could get got real easily. Washington D.C. is only 1,200 miles away. That is within the range of their nuclear capability at this point. So it really was threatening to have missiles there. So, Khrushchev offers to scrap Cuba bases, calls it a statesmanlike decision. Of course, we tried to minimize the idea that we were giving up something too because it would make Kennedy look bad, I guess, or make us look bad for negotiating. But, like we said, it ends up being a deal. Remove our missiles, they remove theirs. On the right, the Soviet ship Poltava, which was the ship that turned around at the last second. So, what was the Cuban Missile Crisis about averting? Averting means stopping or avoiding. Was it about uh, avoiding, A, the sale of American nuclear material to Cuba? B, American sugarcane growers losing their plantations to rebel fighters? C, a takeover by the government by Che Guevara? Or D, a war with the Soviet Union after they stationed weapons on Cuba? <clears throat> All right, more Cold War stuff, sort of towards the end of the Cold War stuff for Kennedy at least. Kennedy and Khrushchev realized that they were very close to nuclear war, and they'll put a couple of things in place to try to stop that from happening again. So, first one will be the Nuclear Test Ban Treaty, which banned atmospheric testing of nuclear weapons. It does not reduce stockpiles. So now basically what you can't do is just blow up a bomb or drop a bomb on an island 
or drop it off from something and, and s test the reaction. You can only do it underground after this point, uh, which most countries still adhere to that have signed on to it. It'll be signed by every major power except for China and France. Uh, but France doesn't test nuclear weapons. They use a lot of nuclear power, but they don't really test nukes. China doesn't really test nukes, although uh, with how uh, the government works there and how they control the media, they could have tested without us knowing, probably. Next one, this will be one of JFK's greatest foreign policy achievements. It'll stand for a very long time. Important to note that this doesn't mean that either country got rid of any single nuclear weapon that they had, because they didn't, because it didn't say that you needed to do that. All it said was don't test them in the air. If you want to look at the numbers of how many bombs we tested versus how many bombs the Soviets tested, the Soviets tested something like, I don't know, 700 nuclear bombs in Kazakhstan, and there are people still living with birth defects to this day. We tested something like 700 nuclear bombs in the deserts of Nevada and New Mexico, and there were Americans that suffered with birth defects and cancer diagnoses and stuff like that all the way until this day, the downwinders. They ended up having to sue the federal government to get their money for all their treatment, and that lasted all the way until the 90s. Next big thing they put in to try to uh, ensure that no nuclear war will happen again will be the hotline. This is literally just a phone line from the Oval Office in Washington, D.C. to the Kremlin in Moscow, which is their equivalent, right, of the White House, the Kremlin, uh, so that any time, any time Kennedy or any future president can pick up the phone, it'll ring, and they can talk directly to the premier of the Soviet Union and try to negotiate or calm things down. That hotline uh, probably, I mean, there's no Soviet Union anymore, but, I'm, you know, president can pick up his phone and call anybody in the world, so still kind of around. So two correct answers here. What did the nuclear test ban treaty do? Did it A, ban atmospheric testing of nuclear weapons? B, eliminate all U.S. and Soviet nuclear weapons? C, was signed by every country? Or D, was one of JFK's greatest foreign policy achievements? All right, the space race. With Cold War stuff, JFK will be the president that gets the space race going. Okay, the Soviets beat us to space. They launched the first astronaut and they launched the first satellite, the Sputnik. We wanted to beat them to the moon. Okay? And in all honesty, we wanted to beat them to the moon because it would make us look better. But also, at the same time, we were literally afraid that they were going to put nuclear weapons on the moon and turn the moon into a Death Star or something like from Star Wars. So we got to get there first, right? So JFK gives a famous speech, kind of setting up NASA and the space race. He said, I want the moon. I want the moon, the moon, not because it is easy, but because it is hard. Okay, JFK will be one of our best speech-making presidents that we've had, uh, at least top five in my money. So the U.S. will eventually land on the moon in 1969, right, uh, after JFK gets assassinated. Um, but we get there. Okay? We're still the only country to complete a manned mission to the moon and have everybody return safely and all that sort of stuff. I know there are people out there that claim that we never got there. Those people... Uh, would be wrong. Uh, you can use high pressured satellite or high powered, um, what do you call those things that you look at into the sky? You know those things. Man, this makes me look bad. Telescopes, there you go. Use a high powered telescope and you can see our stuff from where we landed on the moon, right? So, anyways, the space race. So, President Kennedy's goal in the space race with the Soviet Union was for the United States to be the first country to do what? A, put a man into space, B, put a man into orbit. C, put a space station in orbit, or D, put a man on the moon. All right, so civil rights. JFK and civil rights. For his first couple years, he won't do very much because he didn't want to offend any voters. And in fact, uh, his administration was pretty uh, anti-civil rights. Okay, his brother, Attorney General Robert Kennedy, will work with uh, Hoover from the FBI to do all sorts of disgusting things against civil rights leaders, including Martin Luther King Jr. They will, they will okay illegal wiretaps on Martin Luther King multiple, multiple, multiple times. Uh, they will also okay the FBI's infiltration into the Black Panthers into, or trying to get into the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, into the Southern Christian Leadership Conference, and trying to undermine the movement. However, JFK will have a bit of a change of heart, as will his brother Bobby. Okay, The, the FBI never does. So... Uh, the, the increased militancy and coverage of the civil rights movement will force JFK to change, right? After the violence in Birmingham was, Birmingham was seen throughout the world, okay, if you remember from uh, last week or two weeks ago, depending on uh, which class you're in, AP or regular U.S., remember, uh, in Birmingham, they peacefully marched and they had water hoses turned on them, they had attack dogs sicking them and stuff like that. After that gets seen by the entire world because it was filmed, JFK decided that it's time to help the civil rights movement. So he'll send troops to help integrate Ole Miss. He will help protect marches and stuff like that. And eventually he will write and push the Civil Rights Act 
which eventually gets passed in 64 after his death, but he will end up becoming a better civil rights president than uh, Eisenhower had been, than Nixon will be. Uh, he will not probably be as good as Truman uh, in the long run or as good as, uh, definitely not as good as LBJ, but he'll be a good civil rights president. So there he is meeting with leaders from the civil rights movement. Okay, one of the first presidents to invite them all to the White House and talk to them. He says, the rights of every man are diminished when the rights of one man are threatened, which I would agree with. So after the violence in blank, JFK decided to help the civil rights movement. Was it A, Los Angeles, B, Birmingham, C, New Orleans, or D, Selma? All right, which leads us to the end of the JFK lecture, which would be his assassination. So JFK is running for re-election, right? This is November of 1963. This is one year before uh, he, the next presidential election. So he is going to go through the South to gain support for himself running for re-election and also for his policies, his Cold War policies, which probably had a lot of support anyways because we were in the Cold War and every, every American was pretty invested. But his economic policies and especially his civil rights policies, he needed support to get them passed. On November 22nd of 63, he visits Dallas. That day, he will be shot and killed while riding through town. Lee Harvey Oswald, the alleged assassin, will be arrested later in, that day in Dallas. The next morning, the next morning, Lee Harvey Oswald will be killed by Jack Ruby while he is in police custody. Okay, so that's why we say Lee Harvey Oswald was the alleged assassin because we never had that proven would be on a reasonable doubt, I suppose, um, in court. So we still have to say alleged, but uh, through all the investigations, Oswald definitely did it. What becomes controversial is whether or not Lee Harvey Oswald did it alone, and whether or not Jack Ruby shooting him was part of some elaborate cover-up, which a lot of the country falls into, a lot of conspiracy theorists about this. So what they do, uh, next president will be LBJ, Lyndon, Lyndon Baines Johnson, who was vice president at this point, he becomes president, obviously, after the assassination. He orders an investigation, and he decides that he has to make sure it's the most prestigious commission possible. So he puts Earl Warren, the Supreme Court Chief Justice in charge of it, and he chooses senators and congressmen from both the Democratic and Republican parties to try to make it look bipartisan and look above board so that people will believe what they say. In the end, after months and months of investigation and the use of what we call the Zapruder film, this guy by the name of Zapruder had the best film of the incident because he just had his camera and he was there filming the president drive by, right? Uh, they will say that Lee Harvey Oswald was the lone assassin, that he planned everything himself and carried out everything himself. This is the official government story. Through all the stuff I've kind of looked at, I would agree with it too. Um, there are lots of conspiracy theories that don't hold a ton of weight. They hold some weight, but when you look at it from every angle, uh, I would agree with the Warren Commission at this point. But here we are, there's still a lot of people that don't believe it. This kind of shows... Uh, as a side note, this shows kind of a breakdown between people trusting and believing the government here in America uh, because they don't believe what the Warren Commission says. So, some pictures. So, here is JFK and his uh, wife, Jackie, in the back seat there in front of them. Uh, I believe that was the governor of Texas. He was either a governor or a senator from Texas. They just in an open car, just in a convertible, waving to the people, you know, hey, what's up? A secret service is all around him, but of course that doesn't really matter when a, if a sniper is going to shoot at you uh, because you are not protected, which is part of the reason why presidents don't drive around in open-top cars anymore, right? Uh, when I was in D.C. Uh, eight, eight years ago, it was a bit of a while, when I was there, uh, President Obama at the time did drive by in his limousine. That limousine is basically a tank. The windows are like six inches thick, and you can't shoot anything through that uh, outside of like a rocket launcher, which nobody has, right? And that all starts because of this assassination. So, who was JFK killed by? Was it A, Jack Ruby? Was it B, the CIA? Was it C, the Russians? Or D, Lee Harvey Oswald? Okay, the answer here will be D. I know I don't normally do this, but I want to talk through some of these options here, right? There were conspiracy theorists that the CIA did it to kill JFK because he wasn't really listening to them anymore after the Bay of Pigs. There was conspiracy theorists that the Russians did it. Lee Harvey Oswald actually moved to Russia for a while, moved to the Soviet Union, I should say, for a while. So there's questions about whether or not they were involved, but there was never any evidence to conclusively prove that, right? That would obviously be an act of war. Jack Ruby will be the guy that kills the guy who killed JFK. So 
as you can see here, uh, more pictures of them coming through. Uh, this is the moment by moment of it all ending, right? So I'll get in front of the camera now. The shots come from back here. A couple of shots hit Kennedy, one through his head, one through his chest. The one that goes through uh, his lower part of his body ends up getting the governor because the governor is in front. But you can see here him slumped over. Jackie, his wife, freaking out, not knowing what to do. She's scooping up parts of his skull that had gotten shot out. Uh, and she's also reaching for a Secret Service agent because as soon... Because as soon as the shots rang out, this uh, car is going to speed off to the hospital to try to make sure that the president can survive. So this guy's jumping on. Really goes from going from like idling to going 50 miles an hour in a second, right? Uh, but there is the gun that was used by Lee Harvey Oswald. He got up in this building. I guess I should put a picture of the building up eventually. The uh, Texas Book Depository. He gets up there, this very tall building, and he, sh he mapped out the route. He knew where they were coming from, and he took his shot. There he is in the middle, right, Lee Harvey Oswald. He also shot and killed a cop that was trying to arrest him at one point. Um, then on the right, there's Jack Ruby, the guy who shot him, leading to a million other conspiracy theories. So, true or false, the Warren Commission found that Lee Harvey Oswald acted alone in the assassination of President Kennedy. Is that true or is that false? All right, so... On the left, New York Times cover story, Kennedy's killed by a sniper as he rides in car in Dallas. Johnson swore in on plane. So, Kennedy, spoiler alert, dies. Uh, it's hard to survive a shot to the head. Obviously, we all know that. Um, and his vice president, Lyndon Baines Johnson, Texan, congressman and senator from Texan, will eventually become president. He gets sworn in here on Air Force One. You can see in this picture, on his left, or so I say on our right, the uh, woman with the darker hair and the Swedish looking jacket, that is Jacqueline Kennedy, right, the former first lady at this point. And then on the other side in the white dress is Lady Bird Johnson, which was her nickname, President Johnson's wife, who will now become first lady. All right, that is it for Kennedy. Uh, be right back with the, uh, the, the lecture on President Johnson.